Right then, final video. First, I'm gonna talk about the men's division. And if you're saying something dumb like, isn't it supposed to be women first? First and only, the letter M appears before the letter W in the English alphabet. I didn't make the rules, I just follow them. CONCACAF has had its moments at the highest level and also its lowest. When it comes to the World Cup as of now, there have been 11 CONCACAF nations to have appeared at a World Cup. These are Mexico, who has a total of 17 appearances, the US, who has a total of 11 appearances, Costa Rica, who has a total of 6 appearances, Honduras, who has a total of 3 appearances, El Salvador and Canada, who both Canada, that was, that was a weird way of saying El Salvador and Canada, who both have two appearances, and Cuba, Haiti, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, and Panama, who all have one appearance. Of these clubs, the nations that qualify to the second round of a tournament or round of 16 are Cuba, Costa Rica, Mexico, and the US. All four of these nations have also reached the quarterfinals. Though I should note though that the 1938 edition, the World Cup that Cuba went to, started from the round of 16. So that's the, that does mean that Cuba has one win at a World Cup. Imagine being the team that lost to Cuba at the World Cup. Only one nation has reached the semifinal phase. That was the US back in the inaugural World Cup in 1930. Since there wasn't a third place match game per se under FIFA's eyes, the third place spot was given to the US as they had a better goal difference than Yugoslavia, even though there are reports that Yugoslavia did get a third place medal as well, so I don't know, it depends on who you ask. So if that's true, <laughs> imagine getting a bronze medal only for FIFA to be like, under our rules, you ended in fourth. Imagine being Yugoslavi. Oh. But anyways, that makes the US the CONCACAF nation with the highest finish at a World Cup. Or Mexico. Of the nations that qualified, Mexico has the better record, having participated in 20 qualification processes and qualifying 17 times. Meanwhile, Haiti and Trinidad and Tobago have the worst record, with both participating in 15 qualification processes and only qualifying once. Because Mexico has been to more World Cups than any other CONCACAF team, their record is just bigger than Everyone else's. Everything from most wins, most straws, more lost, most goals scored, yada yada yada. So that's why I'm going to be using percentages. So I can like actually give a sense of how things are working out. Uh, for example, if I use percentages, El Salvador would have the worst numbers as they have been to two World Cups, have lost all six of their matches, have scored one goal, and have been scored on 22 times. But if I also go by percentages, that means Cuba would have the best record as they have one win, one draw, and one loss at the World Cup. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how to go about this anymore. Of the teams who haven't qualified, Curaçao has the worst record as they have attempted to qualify 17 times and have failed 17 times. El Curaçao. Now, here are some quick facts about CONCACAF at the World Cup. The first penalty at the World Cup was given to Mexico. They were able to score it, thankfully. The biggest win for a CONCACAF nation came in 1970, when Mexico won 4-0 in the group stage. Against El Salvador. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they had that rule of not having two teams of the same confederation back then. Uh, Anyways, the biggest L was also taken by El Salvador in 1982, when they lost 1-10 to against Hungary. E. From the teams that actually have wins at the World Cup, Mexico's biggest win was that game against El Salvador, while the biggest loss was in 1978 against West Germany, who beat Mexico 1-6. to For the US, their biggest win was in 1930, when they beat both Belgium and Paraguay with a score of 3-0 while their biggest loss was a 1-7 against Italy in 1934. For Costa Rica, their biggest win was a 2-0 against China in 2002, and a 3-1 against Uruguay in 2014, while their biggest loss was a 1-4 against Czechoslovakia in 1990, a 2-5 against Brazil in 2002, and a 0-3 against Ecuador in 2006. For Cuba, their only win was a replay match against Romania in 1938, but just after that game they lost 0-8 to Sweden. Lastly, Jamaica's win was against Japan in 1998 with a score of 2-1, but their loss was a 0-5 to Argentina. 
So yeah, it evens out. Last fact, Mexico has hosted the World Cup two times in 1970 and 1986, and the US has hosted the World Cup once in 1994. However, the 2026 World Cup will be hosted by both, and Canada also being added into the list. Unless something happens and one, two, or all three pull out, or they lose their rights to it, I don't know. Mexico could pull up Mexico. Now, for the women's, the only nations to have qualified to a World Cup are the US, Canada, Mexico, Costa Rica, Jamaica, Haiti, and Panama. The US is one of seven nations that have been present in all nine World Cups so far. Canada has been to eight, only missing the inaugural World Cup in 1991. Mexico has been to three World Cups, while Costa Rica and Jamaica have both been to two. Haiti and Panama uh, made, will make their debut at the 2023 Women's World Cup. The U.S. is by far not only dominating the CONCACAF region, but also the world level as they have won four World Cups, winning the 1991, 1999, 2015, and 2019 editions. But not only that, they have one second place finish, 2011, and three third place finishes, 1995, 2003, and 2007. Meaning that in all of the World Cups as of this moment, the USA has finished third place or higher. They are OP. They are a menace. Canada's best record was in 2003, when they got to fourth place after losing to <laughs> the US with a score of 31. L Canada. They didn't. They did also reach a quarterfinal in 2015 and a round of 16 in 2019. Unfortunately, the other five times Canada would fail to pass the group stage. All of Mexico's, Costa Rica, and Jamaica's World Cup appearances have ended at the group stage. I'll have to wait and see what each of these nations could do at the upcoming 2023 World Cup. Now, for wins and losses, I had to do actual research because Wikipedia doesn't have a page for it, like they do for the men. Hashtag cancel Wikipedia. I kid, I kid. Still, I can't believe I researched all this for free. The biggest win for the US was a whooping 13-0 against Thailand at the 2019 World Cup. Like, I don't know, I think if a game reaches a point where a team has scored double digits on an opponent, unless the score is like 10-9, to the match should be stopped. Like, as soon as that 10-0 score happens, just blow the whistle, match is over, everybody go home. The biggest loss for the US was against Brazil in 2007, with a score of 0-4. Out of 50 World Cup matches, they have won 40. 40. Again, the US women are OP. They are a menace to the women's divisions. They have six draws and four losses, so yeah. Imagine looking at these records and <laughs> being in the US men's team. For Canada, their biggest win was in 2007 against Ghana with a score 4-0, while their biggest loss was a 0-7 against Norway in 1995. And I'll put in the fact that four years later in 1999, Canada lost to Norway this time losing 1-7, to seven. so progress. Mexico has a most unfortunate record from their three World Cups appearances. They have draws 2, lost 6, and with their heaviest loss being against Germany and Brazil with a score of 0-6 and 1-7, to seven, respectively. Which I, there's nothing respectively about that. Anyways, as of this video, Jamaica has 0 wins and 3 losses, with the biggest one being against Italy with a score of 0-5, to five, while Costa Rica has 2 draws and 1 loss. And it wasn't bad, they tied 1-1 against Spain, 2-2 against South Korea, and only lost to Brazil by 1 goal. The last fact for the women's nation, the US has hosted the World Cup twice, 1999 and 2003, though as I mentioned before, initially China was supposed to host the 2003 World Cup, but they had to pull out because of, of an outbreak. Uh, oh, also, Canada has hosted it once, 2015. Alright, so that's basically it for CONCACAF and their nations. I could have gone more like into it, more detailed about individual nations, but I would have strayed away from the main thing, which is just talking about CONCACAF and its nation as a whole, just like at a quick glance, which is why it's titled like this. Um, 
Will I ever talk about the nations individually? Perhaps, maybe. I don't know, if I feel like it. So, to finish off the series, here are some last minute details about the CONCACAF nations. For CONCACAF, for the U-17 World Cup, Mexico has won it two times, in 2005 and 2011. For the U-20 Women's World Cup, the U.S. has won it three times, 2002, 2008, and 2012. Some CONCACAF nations have been invited to play at the Copa America, the South America's top regional uh, tournament. And that's, let's see, the tournaments that have participated are Mexico, Costa Rica, USA, Honduras, Panama, Jamaica, and Haiti. Honduras reached the third place finish in their only appearance in 2001. The U.S. has two four-place finishes, nine, uh, 1995 and 2016. Costa Rica's highest achievement was the quarterfinals in 2001 and 2004, while Mexico has had two second-place finishes, 1993 and 2001, three third-place finishes, 1997, 1999, and 2007. The U.S. is the only one to host a Copa America tournament, 2016, as Conembol celebrated 100 years of the tournament's creation. Lastly, only one CONCACAF nation at the senior level has won an official FIFA tournament. The FIFA Confederations Cup was a tournament that hosted Confederation champions. Only two nations participated in it, the U.S. and Mexico. Mexico won it once, 1999, making Mexico the only CONCACAF team to win an official FIFA tournament at the senior level. Imagine being the U.S. The top goal scorer for the men is Carlos Ruiz from Guatemala, who scored a total of 68 goals in 133 matches. He played for Guatemala from 1998 to 2016. And for the women, the title belongs to Christine Sinclair from Canada, who played from 2000 to 2022. She played a total of 317 matches and scored 190 times. Not only is she the top goal scorer for CONCACAF nations, she's also the all-time goal scorer for nations for the women's divisions, and if you want to include the highest of all-time goal scorers for the men, she beats that too. So anyways, this is the end of the series. The next confederation that I'm going to do is CAF, Africa's regions. So if you're watching this, stay safe, keep watching your favorite sport, and uh, yeah, be happy. God bless.